doms and subs, masters, mistresses and slaves, owners and pets, daddies, mommies and littles, primals and prey, switches, heathens, kinksters and deviants, welcome to Leap. <laughs> Welcome to Legion After Dark. I'm your host, Lady M, and for this episode, I have a special guest. This is Vanessa. She hosts the VD Clinic and is also a co-host on Devour the Podcast. Say hi, Vanessa. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Now, would you like to tell everyone a little bit about yourself before we uh, get into the movie? Um, well, so kink-wise, I guess, or identity-wise, I do identify as a lesbian, although I would say I'm probably a five on the Kinsey scale. So I'm that that lesbian that will occasionally fuck a man. And yeah, I've had good sex and bad sex with men, just like I've had good sex and bad sex with women. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's how it works, folks. But the my I do identify definitely as a lesbian and I, I will identify as queer as well but uh, kink wise I'm I I will say I have had some relationships that have been very kinky and some that are like not but they've never been like completely <laughs> vanilla <laughs> I just can't do that but it's some monogamous some poly and but uh, really ultimately I'm um, I definitely, I, I, I'm a bit of a switch, uh, although I lean more towards being a dom. And kink-wise, I guess later on in the show we'll find <laughs> out a little bit more <laughs> specific kink. But, um, yeah. Uh, well, welcome. I could probably go into like. <laughs> A little more details, but I might come up. I, I'm, and I'm sure that we will have you back on as well. So you will you will not have to fit everything into one episode. Don't don't feel okay. the pressure. <laughs> sure. Um, today we're going to be. I'm not wearing my corset, so I'm not feeling oh, the real pressure. No. I know that corsets are one of the world's sexiest pieces of clothing, but I mean, I want to be able to drink more than one drink without feeling like I'm going to actually explode. <laughs> so, see, I'm, I'm the opposite. I love corsets. I love, I love the feeling of being bound. Yeah, like yeah. That. See, it, during a scene, I love it. If I, but I, I rarely wear them just to go out or something like that. I know that a lot of women are very mm -hmm. comfy in them. Um, I feel. They're time consuming, unfortunately. Yeah, very time consuming. And honestly, I am not responsible enough to properly care for more than a couple of corsets at a time. <laughs> Two will look amazing, and the rest will just be sort of folded awkwardly. <laughs> That's why I said when we were talking about this or t texting about this movie which we're going to talk about in a minute. But it's why I said I need her oh. dressing room because for all of her costumes because you need to have the proper space for all to store and care for all the corsets and the hose and the garter belts and everything. You need to have proper lingerie drawer, drawers yes. and whatever you know if you're going to have anything else, you know, you need to have the space to properly Absolutely. keep it there. You can't just shove it all in yeah, one drawer. Yeah, yeah. It just at least the amount amount of it that I have, <laughs> you can't shove all in one drawer. <laughs> oh, well, today we are going to be talking about the Duke of Burgundy, 2014. Here's a quick trailer. You're late. Sorry.
Right. So, um, Duke of Burgundy. Um, I don't know. I, I know that you have listened to the show before, so you know we don't generally go sort of point by point through the movie. But um, do you want to give us some opening thoughts? Well, first of all, I love that you suggested this movie to me. And I don't think you knew that my, at that time, that my father's an entomologist and I was named after I a butterfly. I had no idea. I had no, when you told me that, <laughs> right? I was just like, perfect. <laughs> it, so it's very fitting. It's very fitting that you chose this movie. And, and yeah, when it, there are several scenes throughout this movie where I keep looking at the the butterfly collections and I'm just so <laughs> jealous of that. It's like, because my dad made me look at all of that with him while I was growing up. So anyway, that was a weird part of the <laughs> aspect of the movie that was not intended, but, um, I, I don't, I don't know how you want to go into this, but I had to point that out before we went any further. <laughs> it just kind of amused me the different yeah, well, points. The where entomologist that Vanessa's talking about is our top. Now, the movie opens with a scene of uh, a woman sitting by a lake, and then she bicycles up to this big house and walks in, and uh, the woman who lives there uh, is very cold and, and just sort of, go clean the study, go do this, go do that. And, and it doesn't take long before you realize that this is a BDSM kink scene. And it keeps you guessing a bit at the beginning because at first, the way the submissive of the movie acts in that opening scene, you are wondering if they are, are, are they already together? Is she in on this? Is she enjoying this? Is it like, what's going on? Is she just being a bitch to her maid or what? You know? <laughs> and you quickly realize that that's not the case. They are a couple. Um, they are together in this see here's where I struggle I struggle of what to call it because as beautiful as this movie is and it is stunningly beautiful I mean the the, the shots are beautiful the color palette is beautiful it is a gorgeous film but their relationship is inherently so unhealthy and so I would say abusive I yeah, would too. that I don't want to call it a relationship that they're in because this is clearly someone who's manipulating another person it's very selfishly very selfishly yes yes absolutely and I think that I mean we do see it that it starts out where you see oh okay their their relationship does seem very much even keel and consensual this is the dynamic they have the arrangement they are on both on board with and everything and then as the movie evolves you realize no it's yeah. not the it, it's very much very much one-sided yes. and the fact that there's this kink involved you could put the same you see the same dynamic in a movie about a vanilla relationship yes. as well. It's just a relationship that's crumbling where one partner is, yes, I would say, if, if not abusive, borderline uh, yeah. abusive. Because they're so selfish and blind to their partner's Absolutely. needs. Absolutely. And, and she doesn't care about her partner's needs particularly either. No. Um, and I, I, for those of you listening... Um, I'll just say right now, spoilers be ahead. Um, but yes. when you listen to us talk about this, the natural assumption a lot of people listening to this are going to make is that the abusive, selfish, one-sided person within this relationship is the dominant. But it's not the case with this movie. It's a submissive topping from the bottom to an extreme. It's... Uh, Absolutely. You know, and you know, in this movie, it does also point out to, I mean, it initially seems like, okay, maybe the submissive is just, you know what, okay, 
I'm trying to communicate with you in the fact that, oh, yeah, this is one thing that really turns me on. It'd be great if you yeah. said this as like a, a communication suggestion. But you find out that it's as the story evolves. No, it's not just a suggestion. She's fucking controlling. Yes. Like she's manipulating. And it's it's goes beyond saying this it's like no you're not following the script you're not doing this to the t the way i exactly want everything and it's the the top or the seeming top she is not even given a chance not at all and i think that that there and there's no room for spontaneity in this relationship no like how and that's that's mentioning you mentioned about the script there is a there's a scene when she, they're replaying because the, it's it's almost like kink Groundhog Day. It's the same scene that she wants this woman to play yes. out with her every single day, and you see her getting the, the <laughs> that is a great way to put it. <laughs> you see her getting ready uh, in the morning, the top, uh, while the other one is away sitting by the river waiting, and she's getting ready and she's looking at these cards and they tell her exactly what she has to do every step of the way when i ring the bell don't answer it right away wait a minimum of 30 seconds and these aren't these aren't suggestions this this isn't oh, hey i'd like to try this these are demands these are demands that she's putting to this yes. woman who and it it never expresses whether the woman uh, was a dominant or a top before she ended up with this woman or so we don't know right. that but i can't imagine she was i can't imagine that she was right. a dominant previously because if she were she would not tolerate the type of shit that this woman is is doing to her um and it, it raises i think the whole point of the movie is it raises that question who is really in control and is that control healthy and okay and in this relationship, it's clearly not, you know, um, she has to follow this script to the letter. And if she doesn't get away, if she doesn't get what she wants, um, she, she lashes out, you know, I mean, she doesn't beat her up or anything, but for example, they, he, she wanted the top to buy her a bed with an enclosed, um, where, with an enclosed cabinet that she could lock her in. And she, she couldn't get it. The woman that builds the furniture said, you know, who is insanely hot, by the way. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, she. When she uh, was measuring that bed. The things I would do oh to her. God. <laughs> the things I would do to her. I'm sorry. Okay, not sorry. <laughs> she is. She is definitely the hottie of the movie, for sure. When she was measuring that bed, I was just like, oh, girl. <laughs> But she says she can't possibly build this bed for them in time. It'll take at least eight weeks. And so she offers a human toilet. The top leaves at this point, and she doesn't get it for her. And the next thing you know, this submissive is pol over-polishing some other woman's boots uh, in full view of the neighbors so that word gets back to this top. And she's able to manipulate her yet again. And she even says it. She even says right. it. Oh, is this because I didn't buy right. you the human toilet? You know. Uh, it's, right. It's very, it is a very good portrayal of how that line is crossed. The line between the BDSM lifestyle right. and an abusive relationship and how that crosses over and what that looks like, you know. Right. And and there are, and there are, and there are points you know, before you get to realizing how extremely, like I said, again, abusive or at least borderline abusive this relationship is, that where you see, is it just a struggle of do I want to have a BDSM lifestyle 24-7 or do I just want it in the yeah. bedroom? Which, you know, what at each, what at each is acceptable, but... Both of you need to be on board. Or, Absolutely. You know, everybody needs to be on the same page. And these clearly weren't on the same page. And then once you, you know, it, I do like that this film brings it into these stages where you realize along the way, like, just when you, you know, you're realizing that, no, there's just, things just yeah. aren't okay about all of this. And then it gets to this point 
where you really are it's just so much more extreme and you realize just what a manipulative little oh. brat because i'm sorry that sub oh. she is a brat. well not when she can't get the bed in time she practically throws a tantrum at i mean and, really and keep in mind when we're using the phrase brat here we're not using the phrase brat as a submissive type brat we're using it in the old school yeah. oh. And the old school scold your children kind of way, you know, actual yes, fucking that, exactly. brat. Not like fun brat, actual fucking. Just, no, oh, no. I have never wanted, and I think I messaged you this when I was watching it. I have never wanted to mm -hmm. slap a submissive in a movie as badly as I did this one. Absolutely. Ever. Absolutely. Um, she, there was at one point, uh, the top messes up her lines. And just bursts into tears and says, please don't be mad at me. Please don't be mad at me. Because she's terrified that she, if she doesn't do this exacting scene every day, that, you know, right. this woman will leave her. When in reality, we're all watching it thinking, oh my God, leave her. Just, <laughs> you do not deserve to, uh, to be treated this way. Um, no, absolutely not. You need someone who is going to be considerate of you and your wants absolutely. and needs. That again, that applies to any relationship, mm. regardless of what your kink is or if you're not kinky at all. It, it's all the same yep. thing. Yep, absolutely. And I, I do feel that you see that in this movie. You do in a big way. Um, yeah. Um, and, and the thing about it is, is that by the end of the movie it's it's almost it's almost sad in a way because it ends it, with you realizing that this cycle is just going to continue continue it absolutely and there's the one point in the film where the dom breaks down in tears and it's that point where she's just like she just fucking needs yeah. a hug oh my god yeah. like you just feel so bad absolutely. for her and finally, I mean, begrudgingly, the sub gives her a <laughs> hug, but it's begrudgingly she yeah, does it. it. It's, like, I mean, no. It's, it's just, it really hit home, I think, just how bad she was when um, at one point yeah. the, the top hurts her back, and she's wearing a pair of comfy pajamas, and, uh, you know, she says, oh, I wish you'd right. rub my back. And she said, oh, I didn't know you needed anything. And she was like, yeah, but you can see that I'm in pain. And she and she says, pain. yeah, she says, oh, well, I mean, you're not exactly look at you. You're not exactly inspiring confidence right now. You know, and it's like, are you fucking kidding me? I know. First I of know. all, she wants to play it being in a master slave 24 seven relationship that's what she wants to pretend to be if you said that to a fucking 24 7 master oh my holy shit yeah you would never say it again you'd say it once to him and that'd be it you know um right right i couldn't imagine and uh, pretending to care about someone to the extent that i won't even that i would knock them for wanting to be comfortable when they're in pain I couldn't imagine doing something like right. that to someone. No. Especially someone you're supposed to love and no, be in a relationship. You know, what the fuck? <laughs> right, right. I mean, I just, yeah, I, I mean, and I, just, I don't know. It just floors me. Like, that scene was that point where you're like, oh, my God, I want to no, smack right. you. <laughs> You just not not in a good way. Oh, no, God. just it was absolutely it, selfish. If, if there was if there was obviously there's a hundred movies out there that show the dangers of of being a submissive and how being a submissive can lead into an abusive relationship. But this is the first one I've really seen right. that tackles it from the other side, We're, where you're it's the dominant yes. that is being manipulated and abused by the submissive, and so. For that reason alone, I think it's an incredibly important movie for the BDSM scene. Um, right. It's, it's important for us to acknowledge that this is a problem, and it is a problem. Um, no, no, and it's just exactly. as valid. It's just as valid, and people don't it, people don't realize yeah, that. Yeah. Well, a lot of people don't realize that dominants have limits. They a dominant 
Oh, yeah, they can totally. have safe words. Uh, a dominant can safe word too. That is a big thing because of exactly this. Exactly this kind of situation. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, a lot of people have heard of, of sub drop, but there is a dom drop. There is a time period after a scene that many dominants go through when their limits were pushed further than they necessarily were ready for, that they go through an, an anxiety, depression. I mean, just a general sadness or, or guilt or, I mean... Or it can be very absolutely. draining. Absolutely. And and watching this woman manipulate this entomologist top, just, it's infuriating. It really is. You want to yell at your screen, right. you right. know? Um, but it's, I think that it's important to talk about. It's important for people to talk about mm -hmm. um, within the community. Yeah. Because there's not a lot of safeguards for dominance these days. I mean, it is getting better than it used to be. Um, but sure. everyone looks to the dominant to be the abusive one. And people don't take into account that, no, submissives can be abusive. They can be manipulative. They can be bad people. Um, she treats right. this top as a fetish dispenser, a kink dispenser. She doesn't give a shit about her yeah. and what she wants. She just likes the attention. But only in a certain way, right? Well, and then it... <sighs> oh, exactly. Mm -hmm. Only on her terms. Only on her terms. But it makes you wonder, with this script that she's written out for her, like, how many previous relationships has this been the same exact script? And it's been the same exact way where yeah no, it could be completely pathological this like is that the only yeah thing. yeah right i will right. say um on the kink side of things as far as the movie is concerned i really appreciated and enjoyed the lack uh I, I, which is a weird for me to say as a masochist but i enjoyed the lack of pain-based play and the reason is almost every bdsm movie focuses on the pain-based play, spankings, whippings. It looks impressive. Yeah, it looks yeah. shocking. Um, this movie had none of that. All of their play was without pain. So you get to see a lot of the kinks around humiliation, around um, confinement, yes. around you know um, serv servitude, being a service sub, water sports. Um, there was a lot of kinks displayed in this movie that were not the ones that you normally see in movies like this. Um, so I thought that that was really a, a really good sort of bit of fresh air, to be perfectly honest. Um. No, no I, I agree with you as, as, you know, much as I, and I enjoy a good spanking <laughs> as anyone else, but I'm just saying that it's nice to see that, because there are, there's more there. There is more there in Absolutely. real life. Absolutely. And it's good to see. It I can't tell you screen. how many newbies I see come into, you know, whether it's a BDSM community subreddit or on FetLife or wherever I happen to be kicking about that come in asking, you know, oh, I'm a, I'm a new, I'm new to the scene. I want to learn, but I don't like pain. And people have to explain to them repeatedly, you don't yeah. need pain to dominate or to be dominated. You don't have to play with pain if that's right. not your thing, you know. Um, right. Some people like it. Some people don't. So it was interesting to see that because I know a lot of movies like to use the more extreme play styles uh, as a shock value, as a. Uh, well, it's impressive, yeah. you know. To it's just impressive, impressive absolutely. visuals. Absolutely, absolutely. For a movie. Which, for if anyone movie. that makes BDSM films is listening, you know what's some really impressive visuals and is hardly ever shown in movies? Electro play. I don't see it very often outside of sort of like porn and stuff, you know. Uh, <laughs> it's true, you don't. Um, and that's incredibly impressive visually. I could watch that all day, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, unless you're talking about old school grindhouse cinema and some of the Nazi exploitation <laughs> movies or women in prison movies, you're not really. I love a, a good but... women in prison movie. <laughs> oh, me too. Right, we must. <laughs> you have we no will, idea. We will have you back for an episode. We will do a women in prison movie. We can't just <laughs> mention it and not get back to it. If mention it, yeah, yeah. But um, but uh, yeah, I thought that this was this was a movie that y you should watch. I recommend the shit out of this movie. Um, 
not for those same reasons that I recommended, you know, the story of O and Preaching the Perverted, but I think that not only is it a visually stunning movie, but I think it's an important one. Because, like I said, I've never seen any other movie where the dominant is the one that is the victim of the abuse by the submissive. And so that's right. a message that... Well, and I have to say, I do appreciate that it's a lesbian couple. The fact that... Because you see so many lesbian films come out, and it's just... The, they just happen to be two women. It doesn't ever come across as salacious or anything. And it also doesn't come across as so like, oh, soft focus, <laughs> cheesy, touchy feely either, which is a problem I have with some like yeah. queer movies that are made. And, and I get, uh, I get, which I, I'm like, it's fine sometimes, but I don't want to just see that because there's so many different aspects of the queer I think community. I a lot of LGBT. And, and a lesb- yeah, a le- a lesbians or queer women. I think a lot of movies made uh, under the LGBT banner are made for straight people under the LGBT banner. They yeah. um, they would rather show these pretty, soft, sensual lesbians that love each other and gently caress each other rather than... I mean, I'm sorry, all the lesbians I know... Because I, I can't speak for the lesbian community, obviously, being pansexual, but all the lesbians I know will <laughs> ha- not hesitate to throw you up against the nearest wall and cut your clothes off. Not hesitate. <laughs> I, uh... I mean, sh- I know some that sure would hesitate. <laughs> some would. But I know others absolutely would not absolutely. in a second. You know, there, yeah. there is a broad spectrum I know. there. You know. There's a broad spectrum. Mm. Come on. You, um, it is. I, I, I loved that they were a. Le- we're just as horny as gay men sometimes. I'm sorry, but I, I, I think <laughs> women in general are more horny than men, and I think the reason that women are more horny than men is that we're more fucking imaginative. Mm-hmm. You know. Well, that the, 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 the fantasies that we come up with in our head are usually so intricate and, and so, you know, right. so imaginative and creative. Whereas most men mm-hmm. before, before you come at me with your hashtag, not all men, most men, it's, you know, <laughs> it's pretty much just porn. It's, it's getting your dick sucked, you know, bending someone over a table. It's, it's, I'm not going to say it's boring because for vanilla people, it's not boring. It's very exciting, but I just think that women, make use of their libidos in a more creative way sometimes. Hashtag not all men. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, If I get hate mail for that, I swear I will read it on air. (laughs) Sure. Um, But no, I quite liked that it was a lesbian couple and that it was... It was just normal. It leveled the playing field a little bit with some of, like, the dynamic... I mean, when you have a same-sex yeah. couple, it changes the way you look at the dynamic in a dub psalm initially, yeah. because it takes the patriarchy kind of it out of the equation. It not only takes the patriarchy out of the equation; it takes men full stop out of the equation. There are, well, I mean, there no, are no men. No men in this there movie. There are no men in this movie. There are no men. Not one. Even when I go to the entomological society thing it's, it's all, all women i was yeah. i love that actually i thought that was, oh, it was really fantastic cool. that this movie's all there women. is not a single male character i was very surprised yeah. it's like they yeah. live in a, yeah. a town of kinky lesbians and i know they live in a town of kinky lesbians because when the furniture woman comes to measure up their bed she, oh she's God. she says yeah. oh i've just made a bed just like this one from for a woman down the street so it is a village of kinky li- so someone else <laughs> in their neighborhood is kinky but then she's got all these other beds or whatever that she's making. Is she just going around the neighborhood like she's selling Mary Kay think, cosmetics I, and everybody is kinky? I, what neighborhood I don't, is this? I, I don't want to know. Judging from the, <laughs> I want to see judging that movie. Judging from the lecture scenes at the Entomology Society where the audience was all women, I don't think it's just the neighborhood. I think it is a paradise kinky lesbian village <laughs> that is somewhere hidden in the world and that we must find. We'll have a Legion and After Dark nice. expedition into it was, sure. it was filmed in the uk so it's got to be somewhere here yes. 
If you know the location of the secret kinky lesbian village, you can email us at legionafterdark at gmail.com. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, but yes, no men at all in this movie, and you don't notice that they're not in this movie because nobody acts as if they should be there. Nobody is... It says it was... IMDb says it was filmed in UK and Hungary. Oh, the UK and Hungary. Or so wait a it might minute. be a Hungarian. Hold on. No, oh, no, Hungary. It was filmed in Hungary. Oh. So the secret lesbian village is in Hungary. A little bit in UK, but mostly in Hungary. Yeah, they uh, they probably couldn't find any place that looked nice enough in the UK. <laughs> it was definitely cheaper, for sure. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I, you don't notice the absence of men because nobody, like, nobody is surprised that they're a couple. Nobody acts any different. You know, there's not yeah. even a hint that the men are missing. Not even a hint of it. No. Nothing seems. It, it just yeah. it just is. It's just how Which it is. Which I loved. Loved that. I really loved that. Um, yeah. I've, I've yeah. not seen a movie with no men at all in it before. So that was... That was very cool. It's been a very long time since yeah, I have. I, I, it's that that kind of that kind of was a bit mind blowing to me, um, because yeah, like I said, you you didn't notice it until after you were done watching it. I didn't even think about it until after mm-hmm. the movie was over. I know, and I was like, there were no there were no men in that movie, none. Ooh. <laughs> well, I mean, I thought about the no men thing when they had the first meeting of the entomological society. I was like, wow, it's all women. That's pretty amazing. Like, all scientists. Yeah. Very cool. Like, I, I thought that was a great thing. But I, it didn't dawn on me that it was, like, the entire of the village. Because <laughs> you're right. Until the end when you realize, I didn't see a man yeah, the entire Yeah, even the, the people out doing yard work and, are women, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, which, yeah. yeah. Super cool. Did you uh, in the in the lecture scenes? Did you notice the mannequins? There was a crowd of women, and yes. then there was like a couple of mannequins dressed as women behind them. Yeah. Why? <laughs> they. Uh, I don't know. They probably couldn't get enough people I mean, there was only like or something. Three. They could have just left those seats empty. Who knows? I don't Listen, know. We should email the director and say why. Maybe it was some in. Maybe it's an inside joke. I want to I think it's an inside joke. I want... <laughs> inside joke, yeah. Yeah, yeah we could get. We. I, I, yeah. I like. I want to think that not only was it an inside joke, but it was purposely like. Well, we couldn't get enough women, so we just instead of having men, or instead of having men dressed up as women, we just stuck a wig on a mannequin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so, yeah. Um, yeah, do you have any final thoughts before we go to our kink of the uh, week? No, not that or I do can think of. do you recommend it? I do. I do recommend it. Um, yeah, on multiple levels. Because I, I think we've everything we've said is that, you know, it's theirs is an entirely flawed relationship, but it's fascinating to watch it unfold oh, yeah. and it's something you've never seen before you, you haven't seen before absolutely i i have never you know you're right i i haven't seen this kind of situation where you've had the submissive being the you know one who's abusing the and, the and dog. for those um listening that might have um or might need trigger warnings um a lot of this is psychological abuse there is no physical abuse yeah. in this movie. Um, she never, like, physically assaults her in any way. It is all mental manipulation uh, at its worst, really. Um, Absolutely. There really isn't even any nudity. No, there's not any nudity, no. There's not any now that I think about it. I don't think there's absolutely no, any nudity. No, you don't see a single pair of boobs uh, through the entire movie. Um yeah, there's no nudity, there's no physical yeah, violence. No. But they manage to take it's psychological. It's psychological. Which is impressive because they manage to clearly yes. portray this abusive situation and the sort of cracks in the relationship forming without the use of of nudity or violence. Um 
and it affects you when you watch it and you can see the cracks in the top and you can see how the sub is is manipulating her and everything like that you you get it and they didn't need to use those very obvious things to make it a stunning movie um i think some of the camera right. shots are oh god it's visually absolutely. stunning visually at one stunning. point um the submissive is blindfolded and and walks into a room and there's just hundreds of moths everywhere flying around mm -hmm. oh it, it was breathtaking it was really breathtaking i know some of the some of those things i was just i i, I love it i love it <laughs> So, yes, you have a, a recommendation that's two thumbs up from both of us. Go see this movie. Well, you can't go see yeah. this movie because it came out in 2014, but definitely <laughs> definitely give it a watch and think about the message. I saw some comments on the IMDb for this movie that they clearly didn't get it. They clearly did not get it at yeah. all. Yeah, I know. I read some of those too. I wanted to. I I usually don't read what they have on IMDb, but I was like, I'm curious to see what people yeah. have said. Yeah. Um, After I already already had my own thoughts, I was like, I'm just curious to see what people <laughs> view this as. And did yeah, not get it. A lot of people didn't don't get it at all. You yeah. know, I think I, I remember one comment w uh, said, "Oh, it could have been really good if they didn't try to make it like a BDSM porn." And I was like. Clearly, this person has never seen a BDSM porn. BDSM <laughs> porn. <laughs> like, like <laughs> take a stroll over to kink.com or something, at least, before you make that comment. This sure. didn't even have nudity in it, hey. you know? <laughs> so, yeah, but it, it, the atmosphere is, is spot on. The acting is fantastic. The cinematography is haunting yeah. and beautiful. And it is... And I think the message is important. I think, I think that... Yes. You know, dominants have to watch their backs as much as submissives do. And it's about time someone made a movie that showed that, that showed how these situations can be manipulated. Um, so, yeah, if you are a dominant, I would love to hear your thoughts on this film. I would love to hear how you feel watching this sort of situation unfold. Like I did, I, I can't call it a relationship because it, in my eyes, it's abusive. No, it, yeah. well, it, I call it a relationship because, but it's a one-sided relationship. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. It, because the, the top clearly, like, and she says, I yes. love you. She clearly is so in love oh, with the You sub. know, that same. And it's, and it's unfortunate, but it is a relationship. It's yeah. just one-sided. Yeah, you're right. You are right about that. And that, th that particular because scene was... There is some emotion. That particular scene was heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. She was just... She said, yeah. uh, you know, they wake up in the morning and she says, Oh, I love you. You make me so happy. I'm so happy to be with you. And the submissive's just like, tell me the other stuff. And makes her sort of... Yeah. Give her a, oh, I'm not happy with you. You're not a good maid, blah, 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 blah. And it, it, oh, it's just right. heartbreaking to see someone treat another person yeah. that way in the name of kink. Like that. I know. I know. Horrendous. I know. Um, but yeah, so uh, if yeah. any of you watch it, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. And now it's time for our kink of the week. This week's kink of the week is pegging. Vanessa got to choose a kink of the week. She gets to choose a song to sing to later too, so that's awesome. Um, so Vanessa, would you like to tell everyone a bit about pegging? Well, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I will say not every lesbian puts a strap on. So I will say that, uh, but that's one thing, but I've had also the opportunity to wear a strap on with men. And so, and I, and, and I'm, I guess I'll probably speak. I have, I have one book that I do want to recommend. Okay. That is a useful tool, a useful tool, depending on who you're going to throw on a strap on with. <laughs> I mean, you can use both whatever, but it's called The Ultimate Guide to Strap-On Sex, a complete resource for women and men by Karen, that's, or Carolyn, that's K-A-R-L-Y-N, Lotney, L-O-T-N-E-Y, 
aka Fairy Book. <laughs> So it's written it's written by a lesbian, but it, it has some great useful information. I will say some great um, the one thing you have to keep in mind with pegging is is you know know what anatomy you're dealing with. <laughs> um, brush up um, because if you're a woman, you know wearing a strap on with a man, your anatomy is different. <laughs> So it's it's important to, but but still, it's always important to buy a truckload of I lube. Think, to, <laughs> thank you. I cannot express that enough. That is first and foremost where you begin. Lube, lube, and more lube. Okay, uh, it's so important and lube is your friend. Lube is and totally that your book, friend. <laughs> Yeah, that that book actually has a nice big chapter on all the different kinds of lube, brands of lube wow. and everything and stuff. And it yeah, it's really good because I'll tell you one good thing about having strap on sex is you get to choose the toy you're playing with and you can change it up so it's not necessarily the same thing all the time. So maybe one day you want something that's a very realistic looking you know penis with complete with veins in it maybe the other day the next day you want something that looks more like a dolphin <laughs> so and, and if you're playing with a man there are some that are designed much more for prostrate stimulation yeah. so that's something to keep in mind as well um as someone who has you know been a receiver yeah. <laughs> of dildo penetration I can say that, it, you know, definitely you kind of play around with it. And, you know, sometimes you have to figure out what kind of material you would prefer to your toy to be made out of. That is I a, mean, a rubber or a silicone. That's a big one. They have different feels. Do they, do, I mean, as far as, have, I think they do, as far as how they move no, with your body. Ask, do they have, um, do they make strap-ons that will take glass dildos? I don't know. Uh, you might be able to fit. You might be able to fit one in some, but that mm, I would yeah. hesitate to tell you the truth. Because I mean, I do have a glass dildo, but my and mine doesn't have a base to be like to be strapped in. It's more just obviously to be right. handheld, but. I just would feel that could just slip too easily, and I, I don't know. I feel it like could it could go terribly I don't wrong. Know. It might not. <laughs> it, I feel like yeah, I feel like there's a potential for something to go wrong there, but I could be wrong. You know, it it, it would depend on the specific glass well, dildo. There, there you have it. But I'm not aware. I'm not. There, a, there you have it. I'm I'm sex not aware. Toy manufacturers, that's your new mission: create a glass dildo strap-on option. <laughs> Or, I mean, or something like, yeah, or some other surface, I mean, something that can handle, yeah, yeah, a, a surface that's a little different than just your standard, um, like I said, rubber, silicone, yeah, whatever. I know a lot thing. of people are very um, choosy about the material their dildos are made of for good reason, because some material is porous, right, totally. and, uh, totally. well, and also, you know, what's, you know, works for vaginal sex doesn't necessarily work for anal yeah. sex. Not always, you know. It, so that's that's uh, that's why that's one reason why I recommend the book. There are online resources. I believe Nina Art Nina Hartley has a how to peg video out there um, for straight couples Aww. who want to peg. Um, yeah, I love Nina Hartley. <laughs> She's awesome. <laughs> Um, she's awesome. Uh, we... <laughs> <That's a family laughs> All right, Nina, if you hear us, you'll have to tum you'll have to drop yeah. by the show, say hello to Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> um, l let me see. Uh, I'm tr I'm trying to go. I'm trying to like go down a list of of things. Um, it's. I mean, it, the thing is, is that you know. One thing I will say with with men 
you know, and pegging is that you do, and, and just with prostate stimulation in general, once you start being more attuned to your body and in your part, you know, in your partners, whatever, are in tune to your body as well, there is the possibility of coming without even touching your oh, penis. Oh, absolutely. It can happen. It can happen. I mean, it, so, you know, I'm just saying that, uh, unfortunately, I mean, I think it's it's like for so long it was thought, oh, women could only have an orgasm vaginally. Yeah. And then it was, oh, no, there's <laughs> the uterus. And then they can get aroused with their breasts. And there, these are other erogenous zones. Oh, my God, women are so lucky. I mean, hell, yeah, we are. We know this. But... Men aren't just the penis. Exactly. Either. Exactly. You know? I mean, like they, there's more. There's a much bigger picture, and I think it's finally people are finally starting to talk about it in the past few yeah. years. I wonder. Um, I wonder about the effects of the patriarchy on male sexuality in this way, because women's sexuality has always been sort of frowned upon. So we are. I think we explore a bit more because we're not supposed to get off on it anyway. So for us, it's just like. Well, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get shit for it anyway. So I might as well like see what I like, explore what feels good, blah blah blah. Whereas men are sort of taught to be almost these predatory fuck machines. Like none of that shit matters. They don't learn about foreplay uh, as early as we do. They don't, you know, they 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 their other body parts right. tend to get ignored in a vanilla setting a exactly. lot of the time. But right, men right. love it. I mean, they if you take the time to to enjoy their body, they fucking love it. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I, I mean, of course. And everybody wants a partner who, you know, it wants to be wants, you know, their body explored or want wants to explore their body. Mm. You know, and it's we want to, we want, this is initial, this is ideally what we want is the open communication that, okay, and what I will recommend, like, if you're getting into something like pegging is that, okay, start off with just fingering, like, use your hands first. It's something small. It's a warm up. That's foreplay. Absolutely. You know, you know, you don't have to get a massive dildo for like and have you know strap on it doesn't have to be anything huge no. to still get stimulation and, and if you've not done it before getting something huge is probably a bad idea not. anyway no 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 you you got to work <laughs> up to right you have to work up to that and again lube 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 we can't express what it do enough you, what's your favorite lube um i depends on what I'm using it for and and also um, there are sometimes I've noticed I mean because there are some lubes that will I'm not allergic to but I've noticed like eh, okay I don't feel as yeah. you know might feel like okay a little on yeah. fire <laughs> it's a little agitated it's not allergic but it's a it little agitated like and so i'm like <laughs> yeah where i'm like mm. but um like i forget i forget what i'm using right now forget the name of it it was something i just picked up at like pleasure chest here in new york i just happen to be around there and i'm like oh i'm just gonna pop in and grab yeah. something and i was like okay is it safe with you know these toys with with our toys and you know, sure, you know, that's, and then I picked it up and that's what I've been using. If, I, if I'm just going <laughs> in and grabbing something, it is like, okay, we're, what's water-based? Uh, yeah, that, okay, <laughs> that'll work. Yeah, like liquid silk is a yeah, good yeah. one. You, you know, I've been using lately, um, I found this cannabis oil, a uh, massage oil on mm -hmm. Amazon for 10 bucks yeah. a bottle. Okay. And I thought, I wonder what kind of how this works as lube, and I tried it, and I, it's like my favorite now. I love it because it adds, yeah. I don't yeah. know, it seems to make the whole, like my entire vagina, my clit, all of it more sensitive mm -hmm. and tingly, right. and it's just fucking awesome. I love it. Um, so if, if okay. you have cannabis oil and you're out of lube, it works. It works. It works. <laughs> right, right, right. 
But again, I mean, you have to make sure, like, and I recommend to anyone just, it's, we've got the internet. It's super easy. Read up on what you're, like, to figure out what you're going to be, if you're going to be, you know, lots of anal play or whatever. And again, what kind of toys you're playing with or whatever. Or, if you're, you know, you don't want to have, want something that's going to start eating away the mm. toy that you, yeah, you know, that you've got. Or if you're wearing a condom on the toy or something, you don't want something that's going to start eating away the condom. <laughs> like, or, you don't want, like, or, like, some weird, like, yeah. reaction. Like, you're, yeah. you know, because I, I sometimes, that's, I've used condoms with toys before just because it's easy cleanup. Um, oh, absolutely. Uh, if, you're play, if you're playing with somebody so, that, that is not a regular partner, then it's always a good idea. And, and then, of course, of course um, that, too. But... And also, it's a, it's a good idea but, to, um, if you're if you're going to buy lube, if you listen to this episode and think, right, lube, I'm going to the sex shop right now to get some, um, before you buy it, just take a little drop of it and rub it on your forearm and wait a few minutes yeah. and see, just make sure you don't have a bad reaction to it before you buy it. That is exactly, exactly. And, some of, and rub it a yeah. little bit, too, if you don't have a reaction, because some of them, if they're not made well, um, they lube it up great for two minutes and then go all sticky and gross and then you're just like ugh, god why uh, yeah the exactly. flavored ones are yeah. the worst culprits for that i find yeah right right <laughs> right 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 um absolutely um but uh, what else was i going to say but no i mean i think that it's just um oh harnesses i wanted to speak about harnesses uh because that's really up to you kind of as an individual, like what you might, what material, if you're the one wearing it, like you might prefer to wear leather or there are vegan options to leather too, as far as harnesses go. I will put that out there. Um, I have a, my preferred one, I have two harnesses, two harnesses, but my preferred one is a leather harness just because I like one, I, I like the feeling of leather a lot, but that's just me. Um, but so there's that, but it also, I find it's as strong and sturdy as it is. It molds better with, I think, yeah. your body type. You know, so, and if you gain a little bit of weight, which unfortunately can happen, <laughs> we all know this, right? I mean, for whatever reason, it's still it 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 adjusts to your body a little bit better than like my my other harness that I have, which is not my preferred one, but I still I like on occasion, is like a vinyl a much more vinyl one, and it's like all purple sparkly whatever superhero looking type thing, but and it looks awesome, but it doesn't give with the body right. as much, right? You know, and it's. I will say it's. E I find it easier to clean than the leather. Yeah, you know, that's that's the, <laughs> that's the only downside I I do see about leather. I think the vegan options are a little bit easier yeah. to clean, uh, from what I've heard. So I think that maybe the next time I purchase one, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the vegan option. Just like I said, to clean Ease up. Ease of clean is, is something that I always think about before. I get any kind of toy, right. any kind of anything I'm going to play with because who wants to sure. spend their entire freaking night cleaning toys? No one, no one wants exactly. to do that. It takes exactly. forever. It's a pain in the yeah. ass. I mean, it's bad enough conditioning yeah. rope, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I mean, as far as I, I don't know, what else? Uh, do you have any more questions? About, I do. Uh, I do. Okay. Um, sure. What is a good okay? What is a good way to combat for men that enjoy prostate stimulation and would like to try pegging, but they're afraid it'll make mm -hmm. them seem gay or seem less socially accepted to enjoy that? Um, what is a good piece of advice you can give them? starting out to, to make them feel a bit better about you, this doesn't make you well, gay, you're having a woman do it. And even if it did make you gay, that's not a big deal. <laughs> well, exactly. Um, well, and I think that's the biggest, it's, it's a, probably the biggest psychological barrier for, for men. Um, the one man that I, 
male lover that I had for a number of years who like this was a major fetish for him um was a cisgender straight man and you know he was just like I don't care what people think. I mean, he. I mean, it's kind of how he's like. I, one, I don't care if people think I'm gay. He's like my be- one of my best friends is gay. Yeah. What do I care? So that wasn't, you know. But I think now more people are talking about pegging. Um, about you know, it, it it's a much more socially acceptable kind of thing now than it was even, you know, a couple yeah. of years ago. But I really, I really say that it's just. You know, one, what you do in the bedroom is yeah, fuck everybody none else. None of anyone's you know, I mean, business. It's, it's not anyone else's business. And people are going to judge regardless what you do. Yeah. You know, if you have sex on Sunday with the lights on, you pro- you might, you'll get judged by someone. Oh, absolutely. At least yeah. one person who's got such a stick up their ass and probably this would do them some good. <laughs> if they, you know? But so you can't worry about that. But it's also the fact of, you know what? this is your body and you want to enjoy your body and what your body is capable of experiencing and and this pleasure that you're capable of what why does that matter and also um sexual orientation is a much bigger issue than just one act you know it doesn't it doesn't have anything to do with that there are there are gay men out there that absolutely do not like anal sex will not partake in anal sex yeah. this whole um perception of the promiscuous gay man that just does anal all day with multiple partner is is it's, ridiculous it's not when they do study <sighs> when the when they do studies of gay sex like in the country that is actually not that high of a percentage of gay men they or gay and bi men that they study who actually engage in anal sex. It's a total misconception. Yeah. But that's the same with as, as I mentioned earlier about lesbians don't necessarily don't all want strap on yeah. sex. You know, exactly. It's absolutely. You know, as a as a pansexual woman, I have to say I've always thought that there is like a secret way to fuck another woman that only mm. lesbians know that I wasn't allowed to know. <laughs> like, there's a secret <laughs> technique that is passed down from lesbian to lesbian throughout the generations, but like bi and pansexual <laughs> girls don't get to know it. It's only for lesbians. <laughs> you didn't get the secret handshake, God, Misty. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, I do have a, another, another question, if you don't mind. Um, no problem. For someone wanting to start out, obviously you recommended the book, which is fantastic. We don't get enough book recommendations on this show. I need to do something about that. <laughs> well, you know, you know, I'm yes. book lady. <laughs> this is why I love you, because there's not enough book ladies in the world right now. <laughs> um, but as far as something like, I'll let's say I want to try this, but I'm worried about approaching my yes. partner about it. Mm-hmm. What do you think is a good uh, way to to sort of bring it up to a partner that, you know, makes it a bit easier for the person that's wanting to try it for the first time? Like, the first time you tried it, um, how did you sort of, did it get brought up by your partner? Or did you think, oh, I want to try this? Or, uh, you know, what's a good way to go into that conversation, you know? Yeah, and I think the first time that it came up with me, like with the first time I had a partner, like that I did this with, it was, I think they brought it up first, but then it was like, oh yeah, sure, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I was like, right, but it, um, it, that I, I just feel that. I mean, if you're talking about with with a man, you have to start first with the step of, okay, how are you with prostate stimulation yeah. first? Yeah. You know, are you fine with even just a finger? Yeah. So let's, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, 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 and bring it up that way of, you know, I'm always finding new ways to explore, you know, my own horizons and the limits of what my body and can experience, you know, orgasmically, would you like to do the same with yours? I mean, 
you know, that that's one that's way. That's a great way up. to bring it up. It's that's a, a way to start and just again, you you start it it's like <laughs> foreplay. Yeah, you got to do it just you ease into it. I mean, you have to gauge someone's reaction because it's like, well, if they're like okay, maybe I'd okay, be okay with a finger and that kind of stimulation, but I'm not okay with anything else, then okay. You know there's a a limit, but you've at least expanded someone, maybe already expanded someone's horizons by bringing Absolutely. that up. That's a, you know, that's one thing. And if that, if your partner can, you know, ha- have more pleasure that way, sure, why not? Absolutely. I mean, it, it, but I think that's probably the best way to broach the subject. And, you know, don't just go for full, like, oh my God, I got to have this <laughs> big ass cock. <laughs> you with. I'm gonna bend you over. Um, have you know, it be hot. It could be hot, but you still have to, you know, gauge the reaction, know the territory before. Absolutely, you go there. this is a th- <laughs> don't just jump yeah. Away. This is a conversation you have to have. You can't just show up in the bedroom wearing a strap on and being yeah. like, right, it's time. You know. <laughs> have, you, have you ever seen that um, TV show Broad City? No, I haven't. Okay, it's a comedy TV show, um, two women in New York City, two stoner gals in New York City in their 20s, um, what are, I think one's like supposed to be just turning 30 anyway, and the one has had such a crush, and she's the tamer, a little bit more vanilla one, but she's um, had this crush on the, the neighbor for so long, and he finally, whatever, they end up on a date and she's over at his apartment and they're like having sex and he, and she's like, you want to switch it up? And she's thinking in her mind, just switch yeah. positions. They're missionary positions. So she just wants to be on top for a minute <laughs> at least. And all of a sudden he comes out and hands her a strap on and a dildo. And she's like, uh, <laughs> like, what, what do I do? Because even if you are the recipient here, you got to make sure your partner is okay with strapping it on and giving it yes. to you as well. Yes. I want to put that out there. I want to put that out there because that is a different headspace as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Because if you're not if you're not expecting that, what? Fuck? <laughs> Holy shit! But yeah, I mean, and if, like, it's, and if it's not your thing, don't do, don't get yeah. into that sort of trap like we saw in the movie of doing it just to please your partner, just to please your partner because you're getting nothing out of it. It is okay to not be into something, you know? Right. And if you think, and and there's, yeah, and there's absolutely no shame in saying, you know what? Okay, sure. I'll try it one time. And then all of a sudden you're like, yeah, not for me. And you tell your partner, you go back right back and tell your partner, yeah, no, that's, I I don't, I'm not into that. There's no shame in what you've said, okay, the first time, you know, going back. Yeah, well, I mean, mean, general consent type issue anyway. I mean, like, like philosophy. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the difference between soft limits and hard limits, because you can say, doesn't seem like something I'd like, but I'll try it. Or you could just be like, no, it's not for me. You know, I mean, I, I am terrified of needles, and although I find needle play beautiful, I, you know, it's a hard limit for me because it's scary. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, I, I'm, I'm right there with you. No, I absolutely, like, I'm just, it, I'm not, but I'm borderline where, no, I actually, it, if I think I took the plunge with it, I probably would be okay, and I'd be continuing, and I don't know if I want to take that <laughs> plunge. <laughs> Honestly, that's because I'm on that borderline with needles, but I'm because I'm still like I don't know, but I'm so I'm still so fascinated yeah. with it. I don't know, maybe that's a kink that I'll go I'll go down that road later, but in my absolutely. life, I, it um, is all it is never too late to find a new kink. Never, never. You, you, you can always add things. That's one of the things I love about the BDSM community is the sharing of information and experience and and so many new things that you might not have thought of, you might not have heard of, but oh look. All these other people have, and they've done extensive right, experimentation right. with it. And hey, have at it, you know. And uh, so you can always find something new to expand your pleasure. Um, but yeah. yeah, I think I think uh, I think that's all the questions I have about pegging. I have never pegged before. Okay. I actually, yeah, I do have a question. If you're if mm-hmm. you're pegging a woman, sure. Positionally, is it a bit is it a bit awkward? Because I can imagine, because I've got really big um, hips, 
So for me, I imagine it being like a bit awkward, unless I fold him. <laughs> no, it, I mean, it's it's just a matter of you play around with what position works with the with yeah. the person. And also, I mean, it, I mean, it, it's like having sex in any other way is that, yeah, you got to find what position makes is the most comfortable at that moment. And also there's a point where you might get, <laughs> you know, oh, my God, I'm getting a cramp. I got to move. I got to move. You know, and I let me flip you over here and, you know, oh, whatever. You this- just... You just have to let your imagination be the limit here. It's and because it's just you and you know you just got to keep the lines of communication open too. Of okay, that right, that spot feels good. That's the better way. That's the better yeah. angle. You know all those different. Okay, things. she's that's just she's in, making the me, noise I want her to make. I'll to stay at this angle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh yeah, that's that, exactly in. That to me, though, is any the way to go about anything sexually or an emotional relationship. You just have to keep the lines of communication different. I mean, open. And if something changes, or you want something to be different, or you need something to be different, you yes. have to speak up. That's. I mean, that's. It's a, just a general Absolutely. good way to be about. I mean, like. I mean, if either of you at any time have the right to stop play right then and t- and and talk about totally. shit and just say, okay, yeah, that was too much or whatever. You know, um, either party has the right, the absolute right to do that. Well, and and I have to say, like, I have been fucked be- before by a stone butch lesbian strapping on and she very much like i don't like being as submissive as she wanted me to be like so i mean it it got to be like i don't like at a point where i'm like i don't want to always be no i mean that's also why we didn't (laughs) the only (laughs) there was only one time but i was just like no i i mean like okay but it was the matter of like she didn't want certain things and I did, you know, and I did. And it was like, no, this isn't just, this just is not working of, you know, and you know, it it was, it was what it was. I mean, I still had fun, but (laughs) (laughs) there was some fun to be had, but also I know that there are some, uh, like women who will play in relationships where one will, be wearing the strap on and the other will suck the the dildo yeah. or you know whatever the faux cock and for me i'm like i don't i don't yeah. want that like i don't you know for me i don't feel i don't want to i just i'm not into that i'll fuck a fake dick but i don't yeah. want to suck one <laughs> you know i just for me that's just not, not my really, yeah but yeah. you know but that's it's totally a thing for some other lesbians <laughs> like so you know, again, I'm speaking up with my partners. You speak Absolutely. up with yours. Always, always speak up with your partners. It's very important, as we've seen from this movie. Nobody wants to end up in a situation like these two women are in. And on the flip side, <laughs> and on the flip side, fucking listen oh, to your partner. Say, like that's like the other thing. Because I mean, yeah. going back to the movie, fucking listen to your partner. Yeah, not only listen, but listen and give a shit about what they're saying. Yes. Actually. Think about Thank the you. words they are saying to you and think about what it means to them and why it's important Thank to them. And fuck, just have some empathy. Fuck's sake, man. I'm swearing a lot this episode. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I fucking swear a lot, too. I try to I try to keep it um, somewhat professional around here when I do these shows. But honestly, this sub just pissed me off so much. I can't go the full episode without saying fuck oh, a million times. <laughs> She's infuriating. She's infuriating. She is just so infuriating. And I can just see in her, like some of her relation, her, some of her behavior, I can see in relationships of, not that I, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like emotionally abusive relationships that I've been in, though, I'm saying is that I've seen like some of her behavior like some of her emotion or lack of emotion and the way she doesn't give a shit totally mirror the same thing of emotional, uh, uh, you know, Absolutely. emotional abuse that I've, I've gone oh, through. Absolutely. She, 
So that's why, like, you know, so that's why I was pointing out that this applies. This is everything that you see here is stuff you can apply to a completely vanilla relationship as well. And I like, and I like that you can see that in yeah. this movie. Oh. It, well, going I know, back to, I know. I know. It, well, I think it, it, it is. It, it was. If that tells you anything, it tells you just how much this movie sort of impacted us because we've moved on for the movie and gone to Kink of the Week, but we're coming right back to it because it it is so yeah. impactful. You know. Well, because there's so many lessons that you learn mm. from it that you can apply to so many other things and positive yeah. things. <laughs> uh, right. Well, I really appreciate you coming on today, and I do hope you'll come back. Thank you for having, you um, for having me. As always, I will see you guys later, and we'll end this show with our song to scene two. This week, it's Joan Jett, Fetish. <laughs>